You don't want to get mixed up with a guy like me. I'm a loner. A rebel. Let's see what the damage is, shall we? Hi, everybody. Don't at me, but I don't like Batman. Just bats. I like that. There is no doubt in my mind that Tim Burton's 1989 Batman film has made its mark on the world of superhero movies. Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne is revered by Bat fans, and Jack Nicholson is one of the most admired Jokers. But I think there's something to be said for this film leading the way for future and vastly different Batman incarnations on screen, while also maybe not living up to its own legendary status. Burton's Batman is dark and edgy in the way a lot of his films are, maybe a little lacking on the political end even with the big Barely there, Harvey Dent subplot concerning Gotham's finances. You have a billionaire hermit running around town being quiet and honestly kind of adorable. Tax him. The visual influences from early noir films and comic books are clear, the sets are interesting and fun or at least as fun as dark and gritty Batman gets. And even the deviations from the comic books don't seem to bug diehard comics fans, at least not from what I've seen. Cool, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about how this film fits in or doesn't with modern superhero movies. You wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. This is not a Batman film, and I am not the first person to say that. Despite opening on a scene that feels very much like a Batman origin, the movie quickly diverts, forgets about its titular character for most of the runtime, and focuses mainly on the Joker. It's a Joker origin story, and given the fact that Beetlejuice came out the year before it, I'm not surprised whatsoever. But thanks to a little movie called The Dark Knight, I don't know if you've ever heard of it or anything. <laughs> I think Burton's Batman would have a chance to thrive if it were being hypothetically released now. So as Lego Batman, the most important Batman to date, points out, there have been plenty of incarnations of Brucey on the big screen. Burton's Batman is probably one of the more memorable because it's a pretty seamless blend between the campy parts of the 1966 Adam West show and the darker, grittier bits of the movies that came after it. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but it still has moments of if not introspection, then at least complex emotion. And by the very virtue of Burton's Batman being a movie that features Batman, I think it would still make a shit ton of money at the theoretical box office. In much the same way that these completely unnecessary and drawn out Fantastic Beasts movies will continue to be made and make money, Batman movies and superhero movies in general will do so as well. At this point, it doesn't matter what the quality of these movies and franchises are. It doesn't matter who's in the cast and who's not, who's writing it and who's not. It just matters that people will pay to see these movies and that more movies will be made. However, in the wake of The Dark Knight and no other Batman movie because none but the Lego Batman movie have lived up to the artistry of the Nolanverse, Burton's Batman would most likely be reviewed along the lines of Suicide Squad which I unfortunately saw. They are vastly different movies, yes, but they suffer from similar story problems. Their plots meander meaninglessly, and both films treat their main characters as if they're more interesting than the writing allows them to be. And let's not forget that Jared Leto's sorry excuse of a Joker is closer to Jack Nicholson's iconic interpretation than Heath Ledger's. There are plenty of controversial and opposing views on what makes a good action or superhero movie, and maybe there isn't just one set of standards to look at. But I genuinely believe that Burton's Batman doesn't do what we expect new superhero movies to do. We expect good, compelling writing, interesting and storied characters, complex dynamics between good and evil, mysteries that can be carried from one movie to the next. For the most part, we've moved away from campy superhero movies, and when we do get them, they're not nearly as successful as the thoughtful and thought-provoking superhero movies we've come to expect. So between Burton, the studio producers, and a dash of Warren Scarin, Batman doesn't really know what it is. Or if it does, it's not what it promises to be. Maybe that's a result of Burton not being a fan of comic books. Maybe he lacked the context for Batman going into the project to understand what would make his version of Bruce and the Joker actually stand the test of time. And I think because we've moved into an era of superhero movies that are made for moviegoers rather than just comic book fans, Burton's Batman would only pale in comparison to movies like Wonder Woman, The Avengers, and Logan. It would end up being something like 2017's Beauty and the Beast, just another cog in the money-making machine for the sake of maintaining the money-making. We'll see you tomorrow. 
Let us also just take a moment to be grateful, on behalf of all the other Jokers, that Christopher Lee never had the chance to play the character. Hey, you can't just come in here and derail my video with your unnatural Christopher Lee thirst. A vampiric Joker. Page, you cannot honestly tell me that wouldn't have been hot. Sarah, get out of my video. 